Today we are going to be doing an updated five star predictions video. Not to sound cocky, but like I'm cocky about this. These are all going to be five stars. I feel like I am really good at predicting books that are going to be five stars, apart from when they're not. And today I just thought we would close the chapter on that five star prediction from two years ago and watch the whole video and react to how many of those books were actually five stars. So in the end, we were four were a five star, six were not. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Four solid five stars and two more being 4.5, I think is kind of a big brain energy for me. So let's try and do even better this time, shall we? <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing new five star predictions. I can't even control my voice. I am so excited. If you don't know, I refuse to do another five star predictions video until I have completed a previous one. And it took me like two years to complete a previous one. So it's finally time to do a new five star predictions. It's about time! We've got 10 books here that I think are gonna be five stars. Once I've read them all, we'll see how correct I was. But I genuinely believe I think I've done pretty well here. I think I've done pretty well. I went on pure instinct. I went on like, in a gut feeling. <laughs> We've got, I think, about three, four books on here from authors I've given multiple five stars from before. We've got a few authors that I've liked before and think this could be the book that I give a five star from them. And we've got some new authors. We've got quite a few new authors, which may not be the best strategy, but like, I think we're gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, so shall we just get into it with all the books? I think are gonna be five stars. The first book, I am a bit terrified to read. Like I'm putting it off. You guys know, I can't believe I've waited so long for this book and then it's out and I'm putting it off. But I am, I'm a little bit terrified. But my first prediction is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I love Ninth House. I gave Ninth House five stars. I think it's my favorite Lee Bardugo ever. In this series of following Alex Stern, who's kind of given the second chance at life to have this job where she like monitors the magic in the secret societies at Yale. And that's basically the plot of the first book. The second book, I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm terrified, I'm so scared. Look at her, oh my gosh. I've given Lee Bardugo multiple five stars. You know, I've given Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom basically five stars. I think I gave Six of Crows four stars, but that is a little bit harsh, a little bit harsh, a little bit harsh for me. But Ninth House was a five star. What else have I given five stars? I feel like there's more. Maybe not, no, I think that's it. But I do feel like her work outside of the Grishaverse is actually what I prefer. I'm a little bit done with the Grishaverse. Like I know she's gonna keep writing it forever because it's like the money maker. I could happily never read a Grishaverse book again. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say we all just lost a bit of respect for you there. I'm gonna read them, but I really, I just love Alex Stern as a character. I love the characters in this. I love the vibe, the dark academia vibe. I love the setting. I'm really sad this series is being cut down to a trilogy when we are supposed to have like seven books. I mean, honestly, like where's God when you need him? Like it's so sad. <laughs> Something happens right at the end of Ninth House that I'm really excited to see how we deal with in this book. And I think this is gonna be five stars. I'm putting it out there, it's gonna be five stars. I have heard really good things about it from people who have read it already. I need to just read it. I know I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Should I hype myself up to read it soon? Let's just do the other, I think there's two other authors on here, yeah, that I give a lot of five stars to that I've put on the list. So next we have Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna Maguire, the next In the Way of Children series. Something would have to go seriously wrong for me to not give this five stars. Don't say that. Mona, don't ever say that. Like something would have to go seriously wrong because I give them all five stars now, pretty much. I think the only one, I've just done a reread of the whole series and the only one that wasn't a five star is Beneath the Sugar Sky for me. That's the only one that's not a five star. So this series, I'm sure if you've watched me, you've been here before, <laughs> you know what this series is. We're following kids who go into these portal worlds that are perfect for them. And some books are set in the wilds and some books are set in the West School for Wayward Children, which is the school they go to afterwards to help them deal with being back in this world and this is set in the original world i don't i haven't really even read the synopsis i don't really know want to know what's about i think we're following antsy aren't we yes we're following antsy who whose world is like the place where lost things go and she can find lost things really well as we've met her in the last book for the first time i've heard this one is very heavy i know that there are trigger warnings at the start for child abuse and so i've been hesitant to read it i want to be in the right headspace when i read it but i think it is going to be a five star and then next on the list is another author that I have given multiple five stars. If this one is a five star, they cement themselves as one of my favorite authors of all time. And that is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. Now I am a bit nervous for this one because I've heard from people who love 
TJ Quinn's other books, I haven't loved this one as much, but I mean, it's gorgeous. So <laughs> I think it is gonna be a five star. I just know we're following a family of like puppets slash robots in these trees in this book. There's like a hidden family and they give away their location accidentally and they want to rescue one of each other basically like one of them is like taken away and they want to rescue him you know tj quinn's books are always very heartwarming slash heavy hitting slash emotional i'm gonna be interested to see how he follows up house and the and sea and under the whispering door because they were both five stars for me so i am a bit nervous but i feel like if it has tj quinn's writing and like fairy tale-ness um, we're gonna, we're gonna be in with a good vibe. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> then we've got an author that I have read from before but haven't given five stars. But I feel like this is gonna be the book that I give five stars and that is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is set in the 80s. It's horror and one of the girlies gets a devil inside her and they have to exercise her, <laughs> basically. My flavor of horror is camp, right? I've discovered this. I just like the campy stuff. I like the ridiculous stuff. It's camp, it's camp. I don't know what to tell you. And Grey Hendrix is that. I did enjoy it, I really enjoyed it. Um, what's it called? What's the book called? <laughs> the Final Girl Support Group. I really enjoyed it. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but I enjoyed it. And I feel like if I read one of his more popular ones, it's gonna be a five star. So many of you have told me I'm gonna love this. I'm just, I'm really excited. I love a book also that's really like, it goes for a vibe, it goes for an era, and it commits, right? I don't like it when a book is set in the 80s or the 90s, right? And it could be set any other time. Or like it's half-heartedly like, oh, we're in the 80s. Like I want it to be like, ridiculous over the top eurovision levels of commitment like eurovision is about to happen that's why it's in my brain i don't want you to half ass it i want you to go for it if you're gonna give me 80s give me 80s so yeah i'm really excited for this one happy to finally have it in my hands i think we're gonna have a good vibe next we have our wives under the sea by julia armfield i almost read this as my first book of the year because it is a five star prediction and i now have to read a five star book at the start of the year like i once i didn't happen and it was a bad year for me <laughs> So I, ha I have I have to read a five star book at the start of the year. And this almost got there. I gotta say, I really enjoyed the first chapter of this. We're following these wives and uh, one of them's just come back from like this deep sea mission and she seems very changed. And it's kind of their story. You know, the one wife wanting to have her old wife back, figure out what's happened to her wife, what is going on, etc, etc. And this is just another one that I feel like so many people have loved. So many of my patrons have loved this and constantly recommend it to me. So many booktubers have loved this. I remember when reading this, it has a very interesting writing style, which I vibed with. So we already know I vibe with the writing style, it's not gonna be a problem. But I love, it had a very unique uh, cadence and a very unique way that it played with words. Obviously I've only read the first chapter and it was like months and months and months ago, but I remember being really excited by the writing style and the atmosphere and it felt very claustrophobic. I don't know, it made me feel a lot in that first chapter. It just so happened it was up against Legends and Lattes, which is still my favourite book I've read so far this year, I think. <laughs> so it was up against stiff competition, but I think this could be another five star. Then we have perhaps a little bit of a controversial, not controversial pick, a dangerous pick. <laughs> I'm going with The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This has been... I've seen people reading it and I've seen people giving it varying reviews, right? So it's a risk, but I feel in my bones it's gonna be five stars. So all I know about this is that we've got these people going on a writing retreat and I think there's two old friends there who have some anim animosity, would help if I could pronounce words, between them and they're going on this writing retreat and there's like a competition to win a book. I know this goes batshit crazy, right? <laughs> and I know that's been making it or breaking it for some people. I know it goes full throttle, crazy, mad, but I, again, I like the commitment. If you're gonna do something, go for it. That's increasingly my opinion. Like, I don't want books that go for a vibe or go for wanting to do something impactful and just like half up. Be brave, be brave. <laughs> and I know I'm probably gonna either give this five stars or like two stars. Like, I genuinely feel like my bones, it's gonna be a hit or a miss, but I feel like it's gonna be a hit. You know, I love books about writing and about books. I think that's always really, really fun. I just have really good feelings in my bones about this. So much so I got the uh, US version from <laughs> Book Depository before. <laughs> it went yeet. We've got Janice Hallett on the back. We've got Lane Fargo on the back. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think she was just genuinely excited about 
fucking everything. And then I feel like we've got another one that's going to be a hit or a miss. This is the only book I think on this list that could really be classed as a murder mystery. A, because I feel like I get through a lot of murder mysteries quite quickly, so I haven't got a ton that I'm like, oh, that's going to be five stars. Like, we've got, like, you know, the last one to die or whatever. Last devil to die. I can't remember. Whatever the next Thursday murder club book coming out is. But I wanted to do this list with books that are on my TBR. And also, I feel like increasingly I'm giving less and less murder mysteries five stars because I'm becoming increasingly picky. So this, I would say, is a murder mystery, but it's a bit of a different one, and it's going to be a hit or a miss. I know it. And that is Night Film by Marisha Pestel. I, this almost, this wasn't original on the list, and I've swapped it out for something because... I believe. <laughs> On a damp October night, the body of beautiful Ashley Cordova is discovered in a Manhattan warehouse. Though her death is ruled a suicide, investigative journalist Scott McGrath suspects otherwise. And this is, oh my God, guys, look, it's fucking mixed media. I love it. I haven't read a mixed media in a while and I am so beyond, I mean, look at this. I'm so beyond excited, you guys. I <laughs> really, I can't wait. It's long, it's a chunky book, but it's mixed media story about the investigation into this death. Is it accidental? Is it suicide? Is it a murder? What's going on? I have heard extremely mixed things about this. I know this is a risky pick, you don't need to tell me, but I have the faith. I have the faith that it's gonna be a five star. I believe it so strongly. Look at the mixed media, it's so cool. It gives me, something it gives me something you know what i mean i think this is gonna happen you guys tell me what you think but i think you know mixed media i also do think actually although i love reading a shorter book to like get a video out quicker and get <laughs> my goodreads going up i do love a long book you know i think back to reading something like jade legacy or what have you very different genre but i do love a long book you know, I love a book where you can really get into the meat of what's happening and really get into so much depth and like have so much going on that, uh, you know, having a long book enables you. This is almost 600 pages, which is kind of crazy, but oh guys, talking about these books is like igniting. I love talking to you about books I'm excited about because it ignites an excitement in me. It ignites like the feeling of when I first began reading was getting back into reading and like how it all felt so new, you know? You gotta keep things fresh, you gotta keep things new. <laughs> Next we have one of the books that I am most excited to read, I really need to find a way to read this soon, and that is Slewfoot by Brom. Just looking at this cover ignites something in me, it gets me excited. All I know is this is about like a old spirit, like this devil demon spirit, and it's him and this woman like igniting this battle within this village. Let's just say, the devil made me do it. I'm so excited. Look, it's got like paintings in the middle, guys. Oh, I've heard such good things about this. Maybe I will save this for like October time. We'll see if I can contain myself that long because I just feel like this would just be the perfect book to read around that time. I just, I mean, come on. I'm <laughs> so excited. You know, I love books. As we're seeing, I think a lot with this list that like, a, do something different. I feel like I've never read a book like this. From the sounds of it, it is so... I don't know, the way that it's the devil and, like, the lusciousness, I feel like, of the story we're gonna get and the depth and the darkness and what have you and, like, oh, the, like, Satan read. <laughs> it excites me that I've never read something like that before and I've had such wonderful things about this. This is different from some of the other books on here. Some of the other books I'm like, I don't care what you say. This is gonna be a five star for me. This one I feel like a lot of people have loved. I feel like it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be all over the place, but like I'm ready to be taken along for the ride. Oh, I forgot to mention this one as an author I have read from before who I think we're gonna get another five star from. I think this is a fairly safe choice. The Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill. <laughs> this is the sequel to the Tea Dragon Society. Yes, I still haven't continued this yet. It will happen, I promise you. <laughs> but I mean, it's gorgeous. I know I'm gonna get this five stars. I don't even need to read it. Like I could actually rate this on Goodreads today and give it five stars. So this is like this fantasy graphic novel where there's these little tea dragons <laughs> who brew tea with their leaves and it's about these people. This is actually a prequel to the first book. I'm really excited to follow some of these characters as a prequel. It is heartwarming. It is beautiful. It is the most wonderful thing on earth. I keep saving the graphic novels for the perfect day, the perfect moment. I don't know when that will come, but I'll know it when it happens and then I will read it. <laughs> I wish I could read 50 of these. You know what I mean? Like books like this. I just feel, oh, doesn't it just make you feel happy inside and joyful looking at this? Oh my God. Like, look at her. Look at it. It's all so beautiful. Little tea dragon. Ah, that's so cute. So yes, this is a safe pick. It's going to be five stars. And then my final pick is one that you guys, if you've been on my channel a long time, you'll know. I always say, 
Oh, this is one of those books that I want to read so bad, but I've never, I can't fit it into videos. Which, first of all, I've had enough of people complaining. Why does she say that, right? I like making videos, okay? I have fun making videos. Sometimes certain books just slip through the cracks and I don't fit them in certain videos. And if you want to see, like, listen, it's taking me like three weeks to do a certain vlog that's happening and I'm so excited to happen. <sighs> There's no time. <laughs> in the calendar to read books that aren't in vlogs. Sometimes books seep through the cracks. I love doing themed reading vlogs. I'm never gonna stop. Glad we cleared that up. Oh my God, T Central over here. But this is one that slipped through the cracks and it's finally gonna happen. In the next couple months, I am gonna read Unwell Women by Emma Clegghorn, a journey through medicine and myth in a man-made world. It's finally time, everyone. This is a book that actually my, um, I can't remember if it was my boyfriend's mum or boyfriend's grandma. One of the two. I feel like it was my boyfriend's grandma, but my boyfriend's mum picked it out. <laughs> uh, they got me for Christmas one year, and I'd never heard of it. And I am just, I've talked about this so much. I like non fiction about women. I get upset when I go into Waterstones and there's not a non fiction section. There's like world history, British history, true crime. There's not a women section. I just want a women section. All I want to read non fiction about is women. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you not separated that into a section? So anyways, yeah, this is a non-fiction book kind of discussing um, women and medicine and how a lot of like health and perceptions of health and women's health has been ignored and perceptions of health and understanding of medicine is typically from a male point of view throughout history and that's something that really interests me and we're finally going to be reading it. I want to read more non-fiction, I always say that. Maybe we'll begin. <laughs> Maybe we'll begin, but um, yeah, we're gonna be reading this soon and I'm just really, really excited. Really, really excited. Okay, so those are my five star predictions. My 10, this is so heavy. My 10 five star predictions. Hopefully I will read these all fairly quickly. Please let me know which of these you think I'm gonna be successful with. Do you think all of them are gonna be five stars? Cause I do. I think they're all gonna be five stars. I have to put this down now, I'm so sorry. Looking at that stack, I am feeling so good about my chance of success, I'm not even kidding you. I feel so positive and confident that so many of those are gonna be five stars. So let's have fun, let's read these books, let's do it quicker than in two years. <laughs> And then we can make another one because I love making five star predictions. It gets me excited and I'm serious about it. I take this seriously guys This is a serious endeavor. Okay. So yeah, if you got to the end of the video, what should we comment? Comment a flower emoji because I feel like let's summon spring because in the UK spring keeps appearing and then ducking away and it gets all gray and rainy again so I just I'm fed up like I want spring I want summer I want fun weather <laughs> so help me summon it by lots of nice spring flowers in the comments thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video bye